Slightly different one for you today. Looking at some speakers on the left, you got the Heresy 3, and on the right, you got the Heresy 4. Uh, I've had the Heresy 3 for about two years, I want to say. Uh, and I, I got interested in, in sort of continuing the audio journey and, and looking at new things. And so in my space, my main system's like in the family household living room. And so there's a lot of visual requirements <laughs> uh, for, for what will fit. Um, and so a lot of taller floor standing speakers are kind of out, um, you know, stand mount speakers, bookshelf speakers and things like that. So um, there's not a lot of speakers in this form factor. I, I maybe found, you know, three or four uh, candidates that, that met my requirement, which is very high sensitivity because I like to run um, primarily single-ended tube gear as my as my power amps to drive these things. So I've been looking around for a 3-4 comparison and, and I found a little bit of stuff, but not as much as I'd like. So I thought I'd just sort of share my learnings and experiences. As you can see, just looking at them, uh, the four here is is definitely um, a little bit bigger, um, a little bit taller. It's got a different style of um, sort of base plinth thing on it. Uh, they went from putting the badges in the corners, which made them sort of bookend one way or the other, to just having the, the badges centered. Um, underneath the grills, what, what's kind of interesting with the new Heresy 4s is that there's a bunch of different colorways of the grills, which I believe you can order aftermarket. So you can kind of choose both wood color and grill color, you know, for an upcharge um, and end up with a, a look that might be more to your liking. You see the setup is feels very consistent, right? You've got your tweeter, your mid-range horn, uh, and, and your big um, driver here at the bottom. I'm not going to break down all the tech specs on what's changed. Like the waveguide's different on the tweeter, and the compression driver is different, and you can see the horn geometry is different. Like, there's some pretty good detail articles about that, but just kind of wanted to show you, like, physically uh, what these look like, and we'll talk about sound in a second. But let me flip them around real quick, and we can we can look at the backs as well. Okay, here on the back, the most noticeable. Uh, element and the one that people will talk about a lot is um, the the port. This is the first ported heresy, rear ported heresy. Um, you know, according to the people that know, that helps out with uh, how deep the bass goes and how controlled it is. It also means that you have to think a little bit more about the placement of the speaker because it's not a closed box. So the position against the wall. Um, and how it activates the room are now a little bit more of a factor to plan for. I haven't found it to be the positioning to be too much different uh, in my space than the threes. Um, I think probably they had to come out from the wall a little bit more. Uh, the binding posts are like much nicer on the new ones. Nice little metal plate and nice little aluminum as opposed to the, the plastic enclosure and the plastic ones uh, in the previous one. But you know, does that make a huge <laughs> sound difference? I don't know. It, experientially, it's a lot nicer when you're talking about a speaker at this price range. Um, you do, on both models, get the the low and high inputs if you wanted to buy amp. I, I would be surprised if, you know, more than 1% of all Heresy 3s or 4s are buy amped. Um, but it does give you the option to buy wire, buy amp, if, if you want to play those games. Um, you know, which is so, sort of interesting because the the... The high range, the high frequency ranges on the heresies and, and even the mid ranges to fact can be very um, direct, <laughs> very visceral, um, very lively and energetic. And so, if you wanted to say pair that with um, maybe a softer, warmer tube amp, and then use some solid state um, to push down, uh, it, it, you know, the, the the lower frequencies and, and give them a little more emphasis to the bass range, maybe that's a thing for you. Um, let's talk about sound. All right, well, now it looks like they're having a little conversation with each other. Um, in terms of sound, is the Heresy 4 better? I think it is a, it, it is more performant. <laughs> uh, it has more technical capabilities 
than the three. It, it brings forth additional detail, clarity, separation. Um, it has a little bit more of that audiophile high-end presentation where everything seems sort of alive and separated and you can kind of like look through the you know in, with your ears <laughs> with your with your mind look through the space and 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 pick out the instrumentation a little bit better it is the 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 upper frequencies are more energetic it's it's definitely um feels a bit more forward now both of these are broken in the three is more broken in though so you know, a little bit of a grain of salt there. I'm not sure how the fours will wear, but uh, I bought them used, so they've had about a year of use on them, so they should be broken in. Um, but I did notice when I got the threes, which I bought new, that after, you know, I don't know, three, four months of, of semi-regular use, they did calm down just a little bit. But it's sort of the nature of the horn is to you know, move the the audio wave out into the space uh, in a way that does have a lot of energy and a very live feeling. Uh, um, so these speakers both feel alive with the right amplification at the right volumes. The music feels um, very live and energetic uh, and engaging. I think what the three offers beyond being <laughs> much cheaper and available in large quantity in the used market um, is a little, it's a little more easy going to a certain degree. It's got, um, maybe a little more of a vintage sound. And I say that lovingly, not critically. <laughs> um, I, I, I like some of, of the sort of warmth and fullness that, um, uh, certain older speakers have. And, and I think that the, that the three, is, is no slouch in terms of technical quality. And it is a great lesson in your electronics matter because I've paired this with a number of different amps. And on some amps, it sounds like a good speaker. And on some amps, it sounds like a freaking great speaker. Um, but it, it, it's gonna give you, beyond cost savings, um, maybe a little bit fuller, a little bit warmer, more approachable sound. Still that horn sound, these are subtleties. And then the, the four is going to let you continue to push your system further and further. Like it is, it is a very capable speaker, an incredibly capable speaker. And both of these offer a super unique form factor. Um, they, they're rated at 99% uh, or 99 dB efficient, which folks have maybe said is slightly uh, hopeful, but nonetheless, super efficient. I've driven these with, um, you know, three watt, <laughs> uh, two A3 tube amps. Uh, all the way up to like 25 watt um, pushable tube amps or, or solid state amps. Never really pushed it much further than that, I don't think. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, is it is it an upgrade? Is it worth the money if you're a Heresy Three lover and you and you've been like looking for something new in your life? Is it worth it going to the four? For me, it was. I think that the, the additional technical capabilities are rewarding and are allowing me to do more stuff with my system that is like, you know, it's the, it's the end of the chain. So now working back up the chain, I can find additional gains and wins that I had sort of hit a little bit of a, of a, of a ceiling with the Hair C3. But, you know, is it out and out better? I think that really depends on the profile of sound characteristic that you look for. And what drew me to Klipsch in the first place is that sort of the energy of the horn, um, but the sort of naturalness of the sound. Uh, and that continues to be true in the four. Uh, it's just more, more technically proficient. Anyway, hope that's helpful to someone. Uh, have no fear. More headphone related videos will soon appear. Until then, Seincraft, sign out.